Twenty Thousand Leagues Under the Sea by Jules Verne. Chapter One: The Narwhale. In the year 1866, everybody in Europe and America was excited by a mysterious object that sailors and ships often saw at sea. This object was long and round, and often glowed with light under the water. It was much longer than any whale that had been seen before, and it could move very fast. All over the world, everybody talked about it and asked what it could be. Scientists from every country wrote articles, gave lectures, and talked about the animal. What was it? They asked. And did this monster really exist? In 1867, the problem changed from a scientific problem to a serious danger. On April the 13th, the steamboat Scotia was in the northeast Atlantic. At 4:17 p.m., the boat was hit by a sharp object. And water quickly went into the boat. The captain told the passengers to stay calm and told them that there wasn't any danger. He then continued to sail the ship to Liverpool. When the engineers looked at the boat, they couldn't believe their eyes. Two meters below the water mark, there was a large hole in the shape of a triangle. The newspapers wrote about the story, and the public demanded that the monster must be caught. At the time these things were happening. I was returning from a scientific trip in the United States of America. I was waiting to go back to my job as professor in the Paris Museum of Natural History. As I waited in New York before my trip back to France, I was asked by the New York Herald newspaper to explain the problem. Here is what I wrote on April the 30th, 1867. The ocean is totally unknown to us. What happens there? What animals can live 15 or 20 kilometers under the sea? We do not yet know all the living things that live at the bottom of the sea. The common narwhal or sea unicorn is often 30 meters long. If the size and strength is increased by 10, then this could be the animal we are looking for. The narwhal has an ivory tusk, just like an elephant, which is as hard as iron. If this weapon were 10 times stronger. Then it could make a large hole in the ship. Therefore, until I get more information, I have to think that the monster is a huge narwhal. Professor Aronnax, Paris Museum. The U.S. Navy read my newspaper article and made plans for an expedition to catch the narwhal. A very fast black boat called the Abraham Lincoln was prepared and loaded with guns and weapons. Three hours before the Abraham Lincoln left, I received the following letter. To Mr. Aronnax, Professor of the Paris Museum, 2nd of July. Sir, if you would like to join the expedition of the Abraham Lincoln, the United States government will be happy to have you aboard. Captain Farragut has a cabin waiting for you. J. B. Hobson, U.S. Navy. Can sail! I shouted in an impatient voice. Can sail! Can sail was a loyal man from Holland, who came with me on all my journeys. Did you call me? He said. Yes, my boy. We must be ready to leave in two hours. Where are we going? He answered. You know about the monster, Conseil, the famous narwhal. We are going to catch it. We arrived at the Abraham Lincoln, and I was introduced to Captain Farragut. He was a good seaman, and his sailors liked him very much. He gave everybody guns and harpoons to attack the animal. One of the sailors was a man called Ned Land. He was forty years old, tall and strong. He was known as the King of Harpooners, and could throw a harpoon with a lot of speed and strength. However, Ned Land didn't believe in the narwhal. But if the narwhal doesn't exist, how do you explain the Scotia's accident? I asked. Because it's not true, he answered. On July the twentieth, we arrived in the North Pacific. And for the next three months, looked everywhere for the narwhal. We saw nothing. By November the second, the captain and the crew were ready to stop looking, and so decided to spend only three more days looking for the whale. For two days, we didn't see anything that looked like a giant narwhal. But at eight o'clock on November the fifth, Ned Land shouted, "Look out! The thing we are looking for is on our starboard side." We all looked out at the sea. The animal was under the water and was lit by a very strong light. Seeing the size of the whale, the captain ordered the boat to be turned around, and we desperately tried to escape. 
but it followed us, and then, after a few moments of panic on board, it disappeared. No one slept that night thinking about the whale. At 8am the monster came back, and I could see that it really was 40 metres long. This time, however, we were prepared for the shock of seeing such a beast. Is your engine ready? asked Captain Farragut. Yes, Captain, answered the engineer. Well, let's go. Our ship chased the animal all day, but at no time did we manage to catch it. So, said Captain Farragut, the animal goes faster than my ship. Well, we'll see if he goes faster than a bullet. With this, he picked up his gun and fired. The bullet hit the narwhale, but didn't go in and simply fell into the sea. The animal disappeared again, but later that night we saw the electric light only five kilometres away. It looked like it was asleep. We sailed up to it quietly and stopped about a hundred metres away. Just then, Ned Land threw his harpoon. It hit the hard body of the narwhale and fell into the sea. Suddenly, the electric light went out. The animal dived under the water, leaving a huge wave behind it. As the wave came nearer, everyone looked for something to hold on to. I was too late and was thrown dramatically into the sea. When I came to the surface, I looked around. It was very dark, and all I could see was my black ship disappearing into the distance. Help! Help! I shouted desperately but the ship was too far away and nobody could hear me. Before I had time to consider my situation, somebody grabbed me. Conseil, I cried. Did the wave throw you into the sea too? No, said Conseil. I jumped into the sea to save you. At that moment, we touched something hard. It was huge and we managed to climb onto it. Ned, I cried when I saw him. Were you also thrown into the sea? Yes, sir, but I climbed onto this floating island. An island? This isn't an island, I said. It's the giant narwhale, but it's made of thick iron. I hit my foot against the animal and heard a metallic sound. The narwhale wasn't an animal. It was a machine. Suddenly, a metal door opened. Eight men appeared and pulled us down into the strange metal machine.